Well, hello everyone, Stucker you here, and welcome back to another Hearts of Iron 4 video. Now, today we're going to do something a little bit different. One of the things that I love to do in this game is that I love to explore the really fun focus trees, the stuff that is wacky, wild, or just outright overpowered or stupid. And there is a lot of those in Bible alone that release stuff for Italy, Ethiopia, and Switzerland, but among all these, there is one focus tree that I honestly think is just kind of trash. And in my opinion, that is the fascist path for Switzerland. And it's not because it's weak, mind you, I just honestly think that it sucks. But you know what doesn't suck? Today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. When you open up Raid, you can explore millions of champion combinations and master countless numbers of tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and even PvP arena matches. First, let's talk about my girl, Sethalia. Generally speaking, I love support characters in different kinds of games, and Sethalia is the perfect example of that. She is useful everywhere, but especially in PvP as she can ruin someone's day because of her turn meter manipulation skills. And secondly, we gotta talk about my boy, Ethos. Ethos is the king of area of effect tax, with one of his attacks hitting hard and then placing a weakening debuff, and another one that quite literally will always crit. It is quite literally the perfect champion for farming enemies because you can just clear out any number of low-level enemies just rapidly. But guys, there's even more news, because right now Raid is running an amazing trick-or-treat promotion for Halloween where you could win a bunch of real-life and in-game prizes, including $1,000 of Amazon gift cards, as well as some of the best epic and legendary Halloween champions in Raid. Now, the best part is, it's all free. All you just need to do is download Raid with my link in the description, and then head to trickortreat.plarium.com. Spin the wheel, get your prize. That is it. I'm telling you this right now, but there has never been a better time to get started. You can also use the DK Rises promo code for a bunch of free items, including XP Brew Force 50, Force Potion High 15, Arcane Potion High 10, Arcane Potion Mid 5, and 500,000 silver. All of this being to instantly level any of your strongest champions all the way to level 50, 5 star ascension. Guys, I am telling you this right now, if you have not started playing Raid, do so. Click the link in my description or scan my QR code, which is here on screen, and you will get unique bonuses worth $30. We are talking a free epic champion, Terial, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, and 1 experience boost, as well as 1 ancient shard so that you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. And all of this treasure will be waiting for you right here. So what are you waiting for? Get the game, enjoy the video, and Raid Shadow Legends, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Alright, I really hope you appreciated that segue, but no, let's, let's get into this. Let's make sure we have historical AI on and get into it. Now, I will say this again, because I know I've said it before, but Switzerland has the most fun focus tree. Like, it was the best nation that was released in by Blood alone, in my opinion. The focus tree, especially with the non-aligned path and also with the aggressive democratic path, is just, there, there's so much fun. Y you do so much stuff in it. And you can do things fairly early to the point that you can kind of screw over Germany or other powers, so you can really get involved in things early. The fascist path looks quite substantial, but also, simultaneously, it's just, it, it sucks. But I'm talking too much. Let's go ahead and get into it. Swiss Guiding Principles, start. All right, everything for research as well as production is the exact same as what we did before. He only got four factories to start out with build, so it's not really much that you can do. So it's time to just build civvies and plug along, I guess. All right, Swiss Guiding Principles. Yeah, no, we are going to want to get rid of democracy, so neutrality is untenable. And then National Defense Fund, get those civvies going. All right, there is our first presidential election. Let's go ahead and get one of those. Wait a day. Now we can get a new guy. All right, now we need to start choosing the fascist advisors here to get things going. These advisors are generally speaking going to boost our war support and increase fascism, but also will hurt stability because fascism. I would think that would be obvious. Though what in general kind of sucks is like, why would you choose a fascist and not a fascist propagandist? Because the difference between these two, the fascist hurts your stability by 10 and it gives 10% war support and 0.7 daily fascism, right? Right? That, that, that. So hear me out. Fascist propagandist does not have the stability debuff, but it increases your war support by 15% and gives the same daily fascism support. Why the hell would you choose a fascist? Why, why would you hurt your stability? Like, unless you were trying to speed run a civil war or something, it makes no sense to choose the fascist. Like, it's just one of those things that it's like, th th like, that's the little, that's the first little tidbit as to why the fascist path just, it doesn't really make sense. It, if this gave a bigger bonus, like plus 0.1 instead of 0.07, I, I, I'd get it. I'd get it but it doesn't. So, all right, fascist propagandist, get that done, increases our war support, and now we can immediately go to partial mobilization. Nazi party representative in Switzerland assassinated. Ah, uh, well, he confessed, so we're going to give him the maximum sentence. We're going to boost German opinion of ourselves as much as we can. We're going to start pissing off France, but don't, we'll balance the power. It's what's going to happen. So he confessed, I should get the maximum sentence right away. We'll go ahead and do that, and simultaneously, I should go ahead and start doing council diplomatic efforts just to boost relations. 
The only one on the fascist path that we actually have to balance is France, so I can just improve relations with France and we're gonna be fine. All right, increased defense budget, let's go ahead and get those mills going. And another council diplomatic effort. Also, here's the thing to note, because we're going to be attacking France and we're going to be surrounded by allies because of the German Reich and the Italians, we don't actually need to do dispersed industry. You can go for concentrated industry and just get more factory output. So that's the obvious answer to go for here. And so you may say, oh, but what if France attacks you? Aren't they going to bomb your factories? Well, technically, if you were going to be starting an early war with France, yes, but that's not going to happen. And final council diplomatic effort. That should be the last increase that we do here for a bit. France, well, France kind of loves us now. All right, reaffirm spiritual defense, go. And of course, now we have our three options, fortify with Italy, Germany, or France. And we're going to do France because, well, Axis. That's going to further hurt their opinion, minus 25. But we now, at this point, are going to need to keep the opinion of France above negative 80. So I think one final council diplomatic effort, and then we're going to save our political power. Now, one of the things I don't like about the Swiss focus tree is that in order to get a chief of army, in order to get one of these two guys, you have to go down the focus tree of armed neutrality and then choose one of these. But if you do that here for either one, frontier defense is 35 days, Henry Guisson is 70 days, armed neutrality is 35 days. So if you do this, that's 70 days, and that's not exactly a bad idea. But if you want the better one, it's going to take a little bit longer, and that's going to be 105 days. Which you're going to see from this fascist path that we already are not going to be able to waste any kind of time whatsoever, and it's one of the things that kind of sucks. So instead, we're going to make a beeline over here on the fascist path, and first we have to buy some planes. Okay, now we have the ability to go ahead and start buying fighters and other things, but it's going to give 20% of our civilian factories away, and we kind of want to use those right now in order to build up our industry. So we're not going to spend any of that just yet, if we do at all. Instead, no, what we need to do is make a beeline down to here to closer ties with Germany and then abandon neutrality. Now you think at that point, okay, we can go ahead and join the Axis. No, you are not going to get an option to join the Axis or do anything until you reach all the way down here to join the Axis, the actual focus tree for it. And that looks pretty far away. So is that a problem? Yes. Because in order to do closer ties with the German Reich, you have to do both this path and simultaneously this path. And if you beeline towards making it into the Axis here, then you are going to save some time, but it's also going to leave you a little bit weaker as a country. So first, let's go ahead and ban the Swiss Communist Party then. And you'll see what I'm talking about with time frame here pretty soon. All right, concentrate industry, construction, and pre machine tools. Just get all that going. And I think just for the hell of it, one final council diplomatic effort just to increase our balance of power more. I could go ahead and get an industrial concern, but at this point, getting this close to balance of power, I want to save the political power for when I have to get my next advisor. All right now, so I could make a beeline down the national front and go over here to infiltrate federal police and just get one of these sides cleared. But if I do that and I skip these three 35-day focuses, that means that we won't be able to get the Axis gold. And we want that because we're going to be supporting Germany and it simultaneously massively boosts ourselves. The fact that the Axis gold comes later and you can't trade with them earlier is bad. Because look at this, look at this. Fortify border with France, purchase German airplanes. This was a 35-day. Was it a 35-day or was that a 70-day? I can't remember. Someone's going to have to rewind and go back. But we have one, two, three, four, five. So it takes five to get to Axis gold. In comparison, right, once you do fortify border with Italy on this side or forward with Germany, either one, you're looking at one, two. That's it. You can immediately start trading gold with the allies, which what that's going to do is going to boost them up early. If this was the same thing reversed over on this side, I'd be like, hell yeah, no, that's fine. But no, you have to go down through all of this stuff in order to be able to trade with Germany. That sucks. So, all right, withdraw from the League of Nations. It's, it's what we have to do. It's going to hurt all this. And that's the other reason why we went ahead and spent the points on a uh, council diplomatic effort, because we are really going to be hurting our opinion with France. And we have to maintain above minus 85. All right, elections for the Swiss Confederation. All right, Hans Oler is the fascist propagandist. This, this is the thing that is... It, it hurts your weekly stability, again, by minus 1% if you activate his ability. So the powers of the fascists are also not necessarily that great, from what I've seen. Like, you remember the non-aligned? When you activate their abilities, and it's like plus 50% construction speed. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. This, you lose stability, but you gain a little bit of fascism. So, all right, we're going to elect another one of the democratic people, just so we can get him out of the council. And since we can't get another fascist propagandist and we're already increasing fascism, a good one here that they actually do have is a pretty strong one is the corporatist. Because the corporatist is going to hurt you in your ways of like surrender limit, but that's not going to matter. It's going to give you 0.3 political power and it's going to decrease democracy. So a corporatist is actually great. Now with the extra political power, now we can go ahead and spend it on some of the other stuff like industrial concern. Let's get our research faster. I don't know. All right, trade agreement with Germany. I think is that going to hurt our opinion more? France still minus 25. It's okay right now. Axis gold. 
Let's go ahead and crank out all of our militia units. At least this is powerful. That trade agreement gave us minus 10% consumer goods. Th that That's awesome. We now only have 5% consumer goods. That's it. And I mean, in Germany's case, that's plus 10% production efficiency, you increase efficiency growth, and it reduces the lack of resources penalty, which is, that that is pretty nice. By 5%, that's going to help them with rubber and oil and everything. Well, not oil, but it, it definitely will with rubber and other stuff. So now if we just go and open the banks to the fascists, for both sides, well, let's say we open to Germany, Germany trades with us. Italy, are you going to? Italy will also trade with us. So already, we have minus 5% consumer goods, from that, because of just trading with Germany and Italy, with those just minus 2.5 each. Let's see if they will accept an increase. Italy, yes, Germany also will. All right, we spent all of our political power. We can't really do anything else. But now that's minus 5% for each side here and minus 10% for us. That is actually really strong because now we're at minus 4% consumer goods. So, okay, still pretty powerful. What about this side? Can we do anything over here? Limited censorship of the press? Oh, wait, that's going to just increase German opinion of us. It will decrease democracy, but it's just going to piss off France. And th at this point, you can't actually switch sides. Like, this is the point where I don't understand this. You cannot actually switch sides and become fascist until you get down here, right? So all of the increases that you're doing, hiring the fascist advisor, getting all of this set, it does not matter if you want to go and decrease democracy more or any of these, because you, you won't be able to just flip. You won't be able to flip fascist. So why bother? These two focuses, completely and utterly pointless. So let's go ahead and go down the national front then. And there you go, Swiss gold market now maxed out. That's minus 15% consumer goods and plus 30% construction speed. That is ridiculously strong. But then also Germany is getting its minus 7.5 and as well as Italy with both things, plus 10% construction speed. For these two powers, that is a huge boost. Imagine being 1937 having plus 60% construction speed. So that means we just go here and continue to build up our economy, get that bigger and bigger but we can't actually do anything. Because of, again, this damn tree. It's 1937, we're just probably gonna rush through this at this point so we can see how early can we actually get down here. I say how early, that's not exactly fair because we did do extra things to boost ourselves that if we skipped, we would be able to get down here faster, but we'll do some calculations once we actually get there. All right, Panorheim, let's go ahead and get this one. All right, now infiltrate the federal police. Also, I have literally nothing that I can spend my guns on at all. So we're just going to end up stockpiling a bunch of equipment, which we're more likely going to end up giving away. I can't send it over to anyone right now because world tension. All right, infiltrate federal police is done. We can't do closer ties with the German Reich. We now have to do the petition of the 200, which again, hurts our stability, increases war support. Okay, is what it is. We now have 55% fascism, right? We have 55% fascism, and we only have a couple of these advisors. We didn't do any of the additional stuff that is going to hurt the other, like, democracy or boost fascism. This is just natural. So, again, these focus trees, pointless. And honestly, by this point, if you have not been improving relations with France, you really need to. Because the amount of things that you're going to be stacking up as negative modifiers, they're going to go and attack you. They will attack you if you do not increase relations with them. It's like, see, like this, the petition of the 200, they have some good points, increases fascism. It's going to hurt France's opinion of us even more. So we do that one. And even with 100 boosted opinion, we're still minus 25. If you had not done that, France would have attacked you at this point. You go down another one here, Case West. France thinks that you're going against them, which you kind of are. Minus 20. By that logic, probably another council diplomatic effort. Go ahead and increase relations. It's going to take 80 days, but we don't want France to go after us. This game is literally piss off the French simulator thing. Okay, now we do German industrial investments. Let's go ahead and get those four military factories built, which will allow us to start pumping out more equipment. Which actually, honestly, looking at this, if I should have done, you know what I, I realize? I'm stupid. I should have done this first, then go down this path, because getting those military factories early would have probably been significantly better for me. I feel kind of dumb now. Yeah, the efficiency gain from those four military factories would have been way stronger than this. All right, but now we get some military exercises with the Germans, which will give us some experience, so then we can start designing planes and other stuff. Again, 64% fascism. We still can't just go fascist. We're still democratic. And now we have another election for a president. So I guess let's get the last democratic guy out of office, and we'll go ahead and get someone else in here. Fascist appeaser, radical Democrats, fascist recruiter. That'll give us 10% recruitable population factor. Or you know what we can do instead? We can instead go and just get the non-aligned guy because these are so powerful. Research speed plus 20%. Why not? We don't need another fascist in here that's going to hurt our stability even more. But God, France really does not like us. Like, this is my point. If you don't watch this, you will be attacked. Just look how many modifiers are stacked here. And in this case, France gains fortified border with them, minus 25. Again, that might actually put us in breach of neutrality. So we're going to publicly denounce the Germans and the Italians, because they already love us, so it's not going to matter. 
And then we're going to do another council diplomatic effort, because we, we have to. All right, now in this case, we're pretty much going to max out all of our civvies. So we'll do that, and then build up our infrastructure, because we can't do anything else here, actually. And so now closer ties with the German Reich, which again, pisses off the Allies even more. Gives us a bunch of political power, too, that we probably can't use. Now we need to start increasing relations with the UK so that they don't get pissed off at us too much. All right, closer tie with the Germans. Now, actually, we can't do abandoned neutrality because I completely forgot that I have to be to the left of strong balance of power. Now, we're going to lose a single day. It's fine. We're going to consolidate power here in the council, and that's going to boost us over to the full council control. A single day is not going to change anything in the grand scheme of things. Now, you get two options. You can go and promote Tobler, or you can promote Hen. And the issue is, if you go Hen, this is going down the path of becoming a puppet of the Germans. Why would you choose this? So instead, no, we're going to promote Tobler, person, whatever. All right, Tobler's done. Next step, ban Democratic parties, which... We're already in such tight control. For fact, why is that necessary? Like, so many other things prior to this should have been just 35-day focuses to speed run down it, rather than making some of them 70 days, just, or eliminate some of them altogether, just so that we'd be able to get down here faster. Because it makes no sense to ban Democratic parties when we're already that highly in control as fascist. Because look, that decreases democracy, this just gives a base boost to fascism. And you have to do both in order to be able to get to centralized Switzerland. All right, ban Democratic parties. Centralized Switzerland now, that's 70 days. Which the balance of power moves 15% towards the side of the federal council. We're already at 100%. Why would this be necessary? Why would that matter at this point? We're already fully centralized. Just so many of these things don't really make sense. All right, centralization is done. That means German military collaboration. And we've now built everything in here in Switzerland. We can't really do much else. Oh, but wait, what's this? We don't have the option to just give away our civilian factories for planes anymore. Like, for whatever reason, we can't purchase German airplanes more. I, I don't know why. Like, that's not a thing once you actually are no longer neutral. So we'll do the regional integration and just start building mills so we can actually prepare some stuff now. All right, German military collaboration. So now we professionalize the militias. And there we go, professionalize the militias. That means March of 1939. Now we can finally do the 35-day focus to join the Axis. At the same time, we now have Swiss infantry instead of just the Swiss citizen militia. So it took us all the way until like a quarter into 1939 in order to be able to change up anything for our infantry or army or anything. You could do this so much earlier in any of the other paths. So now I need to just go over here and like, I don't know, add infantry to it so I can actually do things. A 12 width engineer and artillery. Okay, that's that's all we could do. So we just need to go ahead and start exercising immediately because things are going to happen. We got to put them on the border and we got to prepare. There's really not much else that we can be do that we can actually do. But we're now really going to be hurting on all of our manpower, so we need to start cranking that back up again to at least get 5%. All right, here we go. We have joined the Axis in April of 1939. We will be able to help against France, but we're not going to be able to really do anything else. That's it. There's no additional focus trees that allow you to do anything for seizing land in Italy, nothing against Germany, you can't, like, take any kind of action against France, that's it. That's really it! And once you've actually done this, then you, you can't get any of this until we're actually able to take over parts of France. So that's, that's the end of this. So now we just go over here and we go and get more military factories because this is all that we can do. Expand the weapons industry. Now we actually start boosting our industry. Not that there was anything that we could have spent our industry on before. I really can't help but think that this focus tree would be decent in an ahistorical path, but also it takes so long to do anything. Like, you're not able to do this until 1939, and if Germany or Italy goes non-aligned or democratic or communist or whatever, you're, you're screwed. Like, the focus tree is specifically designed around historical. If it's not historical, there's nothing for you to do. All right, Italy pursues closer bonds to Germany. We are right there now. So we're just going to build anti-air. There's literally nothing else for us to do. I mean, I could build infrastructure for Germany and support them, but it's like, what, what else are you actually going to do? Wait a minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Italy is still at war with Ethiopia? Wait a minute. Where the hell is Ethiopia? Is it? They already conquered that. Like, a, why, why am I called to arms for... What? Hold on. Is that a bug? Is that a bug? Italy, Italy already conquered Ethiopia. Where is Ethiopia? They don't exist. Why am I being called to arms? Well, that's dumb, but now we have two different options at this point. You could go down, focus on armor and, like, mobility, or we can focus more on our planes. 
and special forces. Like, minus 10% fighter construction is awesome, but we're not going to be able to produce enough as Switzerland for it to really matter. So instead, we're going to go down here because rearm Switzerland minus 25% lack of resource penalty. This is just so much significantly better. And Poland refuses the German ultimatum. We're going to go ahead and stop our training right here because things are about to happen. All right, tank development then. All right, there goes Germany declaring war on Poland. Now, they're going to call us into the war. We are not going to accept, though. The reason why we are not going to accept is because all of this territory around here, if we accept it here, this is a brutal killing ground. It is mountains, it is across a river, Germany is going to throw away lives by the literal tens of or hundreds of thousands trying to cross this area. We cannot do anything until Poland has capitulated and they go start after the Benelux or something. Because Germany is stupid and that's what the AI does. Alright, so there's the pressure towards the Benelux. Poland could just go ahead and capitulate. I know that we have less forces over here because they concentrated more things in Switzerland. All right, declaring on Belgium. Now it's going to be double-sided. They're going to prepare for either one. We're going to accept the call to arms from Germany, and this should weaken them enough on this side that we can really begin to push. There we go. Because now we can go ahead and get them involved. As Germany just goes and declares war on everyone and everything. Oh my god, see what I'm talking about? Literally throwing away their men's lives attacking over here. All right, we're just going to continue attack and push where they're weak because now France is literally going to have no men. They have no men in Paris! Attack! What are you doing? They're trying to concentrate all their forces over here. Why? Just just go! Damn it, Germany, come on! You've already thrown away 150,000 men. See, this is what I'm talking about. It's like, you think, oh, the Germans can join the Swiss. They'll go around the Maginot. Throws themselves into a wall of just the utter meat grinder on this side. It's terrible. You idiots, keep pushing. Okay, there goes France, at least. All right, so that... That has happened, all right. Well, that cost way more lives than it outright should have here. It really did. And now I just hope to God that the Italians can deal with things down here in the south. Now the real question is, I can't actually do anything here because of the British. It's like th there's really nothing else for us to do. It's one of the key reasons why I spent so much time. I, I built this way earlier. I tried to build some basic close air support so I could get some like naval bombers in the air to try and take out the British Navy. I don't know if it'll actually work though. Like, they're contesting this right now. I don't know if it'll happen. Because I can't build radar in any of these territories. It won't let me. And they have so many more fighters. So that doesn't even matter. Like, I don't think that that's going to actually work. It's not like I can get more rubber, so that's not really going to work out so well for me. So, like, now there's not anything for me to really do. Like, that, that, that's it. We're done. And I can't order them to help anywhere here. So it's like, does it, does it even matter? No, I don't think that it's going to work. I think my planes are just going to end up getting shot down, I'm pretty sure. Yep, see, we're already losing friendly planes. I can't do anything there. I guess Swiss artillery then. I don't know. Once I build these, I have nothing else to actually build, so I guess we'll just start building infrastructure. It's the great Swiss road network. So they're just going to build infrastructure everywhere for the Germans. That's that's all I'm good for, I guess. That's, that's the only thing I can do. All right, Swiss artillery and then industrial production. So lack of resources penalty minus 25% and a 15% production capacity increase. That is really nice. Not that it actually does anything for me right now, though. All right, great. Everyone's in the war now. Not sure that it'll actually do anything or what it is that we can do, but it is what it is. I, I, can't, I can't do anything. We're just going to have a fully stacked out division that we, we can't really do anything. Like, we don't have much population, so we just need to make small elite units, basically, as well as we can. And that's, that's it. June 1940. We've we've done the fa the pact. We can't we can't get supremacy in anything else. We can't. Th there's literally nothing for us to do except assist the Germans. Nothing really special about it. So now we can't even get arm neutrality and get in the, uh, ahead of the army or anything. We're just we're done. So since that's it, we just decrease the cost of air production, I guess, so that we can produce more because the focus is done. We now just play a supporting role for the rest of the game. Yep, now we're just losing more and more fighters. <sighs> we can't really do anything over here, actually. We're gonna hold. Like, th that's it. Alright, Norway is gone. That, uh, clears things over here, I guess. Now we're just sitting here with 42,000 equipment, nothing to really use it on. So, I mean, Germany, do you, you want some, like, equipment or something? I can give you 30,000 guns. Yeah, you'll take it. I'm sure they appreciate it. Alright, there goes Greece. Okay, so that, that happens. I won't be able to do anything up here in the north, so I might as well go down south and assist. Goodbye, Greek boys. I bet you I bet you did not anticipate the Swiss coming and attacking you. Oh, Yugoslavia joined the Allies. Really? Really? We're going on that side too? We just got busy down by the other side. Fine. Service by requirement. Everyone has to serve. I, I, I don't know what else to do. We're going to need a lot more manpower. All right, there goes Yugoslavia then. Wow, that was really quick. Okay. Ongoing trade with the Germans? Yes. Give me that trade. Keep going. All right, keep on pushing through. Keep on pushing through. Wait, what? Eight, nine, nine, come on, there we go. Okay, the more of the varying divisions that we can go around here and trap, the better. 
Italy sends military support? Wait, what? Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Not that I actually needed it, but I'll take it. Because check it, that is six more French divisions that are trapped. All right, here we go. Just really want to take out the Greeks before the Soviets get involved. Oh, whoa, wait, the Italians went and attacked from the south. I did not even realize. Okay, there we go. That's the majority of free French military was in Greece, and they're just gone now. And that means we can start preparing over here for the Soviets then, since this is going to be taken care of. All right, do I have any participation? I do. I actually have 7% participation. That is very, fairly nice. God, the Italians still not able to really push down here. Okay, Italy, are you hurting on anything? Open logistics. Holy crap, you are. Okay, uh, wow, Italy. Wait, what kind of deficit do you have? 2.5k trucks. That's a lot. Here, you can have all of my old shitty guns and like 10,000 new ones. I can't give you anything else, though. That should at least help you down here in the south, because you are going to burn through everything. All right, because there goes Greece. That should free things up on this side. In June of 1941, are we... We're going to do the whole war declaration thing? You're, at, you're actually freed up here, so... I, uh, I don't know, I don't know what you're doing. There they go. Okay. All right, let's join the war. Okay, fantastic. Now we just got to move on cleaning up the Soviets here as much as we can. Trap a bunch of these units. What if I just did this? Will that work? Kind of pin this? All right. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Japan declared war on the Philippines. Okay, there we go. That's like a whole bunch of units trapped. What is that? It's like 18 divisions of infantry and two tanks. All right. That is a huge amount right here in the beginning to get caught. Whoo. Okay. What did that put them at? Soviet Union, that was like almost 300,000 men gone in the first month of conflict. All right. No, 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 no. There we go. Okay, that's all. That's group trapped again. Let's go, let's go, let's go. There's like five more divisions. Come on, come on, just steadily move our way south. We can do it. We can wrap this. We can wrap this. Oh, okay. How many divisions is that now that we trapped? Holy crap. Okay, that is like 42 divisions that are trapped. No, 40, 43. That's 43 divisions that are trapped. Dear Lord, this is ridiculous. Am I, am I going to be able to get more? I think I'm going to get more down here. If we can just push our way through this, this will be even more. Come on, attack from the other side, you ingrates. Am I doing the only thing here? 95, 96, 98. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, come on. Did you Idiots, attack from the other side. They're still not connecting it. Fine, we can attack here. There we go. Now that traps them. That's a, that's more trapped. God, it's like the Swiss are the only ones doing anything here. Oh, wow, that is a lot of Soviet units trapped here. Um... That's really bad, actually. That's really bad for them. Okay, it is September of 1941. What are the Soviets at? 1.23 million losses. In two months, they took over a million casualties. It says that we killed 12,000 of the Soviets. No, no. We are the ones responsible for that. We are the ones that cut them off. They have nine more divisions that are trapped here that are about to get wiped. They have basically no troops on their front line at all anymore. They, they have to start a general retreat. They went from having potentially 200 divisions in the field to 157. They lost maybe 25% of their combat strength in less than two months. All right, three more divisions trapped. That's like all their tanks too. All of Kiev. All right, we got that. All right, and there we go. That's another pocket. There we go. Even more divisions. Get wiped. Get more equipment. Germans, are you hurting on equipment at all? Oh, dear Lord, you actually are. Uh, shoot. Okay, hold on. Start Lend-Lease. All right, 10,000 guns. We're going to send everything over here to you, Germans, along with like 500 trucks, because I'm pretty sure you're going to need that. I love this open logistics system. This thing, being able to see what your allies are actually hurting on is just, th this is fantastic. I love this. Oh, also, to modify the lease, we're going to add support equipment. I got a ton of support equipment. There we go. 96, 97, 98, 99. Is that another pocket? That's another pocket. All right, there's a couple more units trapped. Get these wiped out. January 1st, 1942, brand new year. Soviets almost 2 million dead. Germans, why do you have 26 divisions present in that same little province? Fall of Leningrad. Oh, wait, are we making progress up here? Oh, come on. Germans, please wipe these guys out. Dear Lord. How are you still split over here dealing with these troops? There we go. Five more divisions trapped. Come on. Why have we stalled? We're right here. The Germans have 437 divisions in the field. This should be easy for them. The Soviets have lost like over half their troops. All right, fine. Soviets... If you're not going to clear these guys out, then I will. Oh my god, that's why it's built up with so many forts. Oh, shoot. Well, that explains it. Um, I'm about to burn through a lot of manpower here, aren't I? Yeah, I've already lost 85,000 men here doing all this. Oh, we are taking such bad losses. Come on, take them. God, no wonder the Germans were bleeding out over here there the entire time. I'm so sorry for blaming you guys. Oh, but dear lord, that finally took that. Which means the Estonians are gone. Which means we can wipe out these troops. And that should finally strengthen the Germans over on the other side. All right. 
Fall of Moscow. Oh, wait, are they actually doing it? They are doing it. Ah, oh, good to know that me helping out here did that on this side. Perfect. Oh, and I think that's the Soviets trying to retreat out of the Caucasus now. I think that we got it. Yep, yep, they are trying to abandon the front here. All right, but it's fine. If the Soviets can concentrate their forces, that just means more troops that I will be able to wipe out. And that means German oil fields now. Okay, well, Germans aren't going to have any problem fueling their planes or doing anything then. 1942, and it's, it's taken. Now we just make our way north and hope that the Americans don't try anything over here. Because what was the Soviets to... Hold on, when did they lose like a hundred more divisions? They're down to only 68 troops? Is is that it? Well, let's just like um go or something. There isn't anything that they can do now. We, we just, we, we got them trapped. We'll snake these guys up here to the north and we'll cut off more of their divisions. But besides that, we they're done. I think this is like the majority of the Soviet army that is left right here. Yep. They're, uh, they're wide open. Where are they at now? Potentially 50 divisions to cover the entire front. Yeah, buddy, it, it ain't it ain't happening. Other than a few fast-moving cavalry and truck divisions that were able to escape, they're they're gone. Vichy France joins the Axis. Yep, the UK is trying something down here, but I don't think it's going to work out for them necessarily. Got 38,000 infantry equipment still. Germans, do you need anything? No, they're actually good on infantry equipment. Italians, what about you? You're even good down here. Okay, and there you go. It's like October of 1942. Soviets wiped that easily. All right. Can I claim any of this? I contributed 15%. Can I get anything? And there you go. 28th of October, 1942. Germany takes all of this and creates some really nasty looking puppets. Oh, look, all the caucuses got free. That's lovely. And Switzerland has Iran as a puppet. I guess you got to la launder that oil money somewhere. All right. Who do I actually get? I got Helvetic Estonia. So I got Estonia over here, and I got Iran as my puppets. Free oil. That's why I wanted Iran. Now let's go ahead and uh, let's 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 wipe the British out of here. Because now that means the Germans, since they don't have to deal with the Soviets, can concentrate their forces everywhere. And there we go. That's Italy saved. Fantastic. Wiping out more of those units. Do I seriously only have 4% war contribution now at this point? But great. Now I puppeted Iran, which means that we now have to deal with the British down here. Okay, well... Lovely. Let's go to India, boys. The Swiss are in India. I guess it's a good thing the Mountaineers are here <laughs> to fight in Afghanistan and other territories. Oh, God. We're just going to bleed ourselves out here in the mountains. This is actually not going to work. Crap. Wait. Why is Germany now rejecting our trade goods? You bastards. Come on. We're going to get all these bonuses for fighting in the mountains. I guess that's what, what we're just doing. All right. Come on. Make a beeline down through here. The faster that we can push, the better. Give them no time to rest whatsoever. Push, 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 push. All right, now at this point, there's really nothing that I can actually do here. Like, that's it. Do we have bonuses here? Do we have anything? Like, with the Americans here, it's overwhelming air superiority on behalf of the enemy from the looks of it. It's like, I, I don't think there's anything that necessarily I could do. So I wonder if I just pumped out, like, a bunch of Hydras or something, and I, like, took all these and did, like, what? Close air support? No, not close air support. Naval strike? Will that, like, do anything? Trying to bomb the shit out of them? I don't know if I'm just going to lose, like, a bunch of planes or not. Like, okay, yeah, we lost five Hydras, and we sunk one convoy. Okay, it's not exactly good. Yeah, here I lost three more Hydras. They're, ah, oh, th that, that was a massive waste of resources, it looks like. All that time that I spent building all that stuff. We are just, we're not doing much damage. <laughs> no. Like, I know we're hurting the British Navy. Like, I know we are doing that. But we are taking some serious losses. We'll leave it like that here for a bit and just see what happens. All right, and we're just going to move these troops over to, to Cairo because there's literally nothing that we can do over here now. And well, I mean, that's, I guess, really, I, we're, we're doing damage, right? Like, we're doing a decent amount of damage. We're losing some Hydras, but we're able to do a decent amount of damage to the enemy. Do I, did I seriously lose that many men? Why do I only have 67,000 left? Oh, no. Yeah, there's no way for us to get air superiority here. We're just kind of trapped now unless the Germans do something really wild because that's it now they're just going to continuously bleed out down here in the south they beat the Soviets they won but I, I genuinely don't think anything is going to happen I can't do anything myself so I'm just wondering if I should just leave this and just come back w later and look northern England wait a minute. when did we take the Isle of Man Italy of all things you launched an invasion and took the Isle of Man why all right there's a bunch of Americans wiped El Alamein taken holy crap wow that is that is a lot of troops um well there we go that's the majority of the american forces trapped in alexandria come on there we go all right well that's the north africa front cleared then all right 
Are we doing anything over here? No, we are still not doing like any damage whatsoever. Oh boy. Turkey joins the allies. Are you kidding? No. All right, we need to readjust. There we go. That wipes out the Turks down here. You really thought that you could do this from the side? Really? I am truly baffled because it just means that you're going to lose that much more quickly. I mean, look, look at this. Look at this. The Bulgarians have already broken through on this side. There, you're done. You're done. You're done. And there goes Turkey. Wow. Lovely. Oh, hey, look. Is that a, is that a little D-Day over here? Are they actually trying a little D-Day? Oh, wait. They got a port. They got a port. They got a lot of ports. Oh, no. All right. Readjust. We got to ship our troops over to the other side now because uh, otherwise we, we were going to end up losing down here. 18 divisions. God, they're just landing more and more divisions in. But why Bordeaux? Why, why not? Why not up here? French government returns to Paris. Wait, what? Oh, oh, okay. So Vichy France just has everything over here now. Huh, I guess the Germans no longer have to worry about it. They just get Vichy France as an ally then. And there go all the British. Okay. Britain, that was a ton of your forces. What do you actually, what are you at? Almost 3 million losses. Okay, well, it's fairly significant, I think. In my case, uh, all adults serve? Like, is there anything for me to do with my equipment? Not necessarily, I just, I need population. <laughs> Every adult man in Switzerland is gonna sacrifice himself now. Uh, oh, so now they're trying to invade Germany then. I, I don't know if that's gonna work, my friend. Oh, there goes Ethiopia. Wait, is the war just now ending for it? Okay, well, we're gonna confirm and finish that. Yeah, Italy, go ahead and get all that, I don't care. That removes a whole bunch of units from their side, so it's fine. All right, there's the Horn of Africa now. It's 1944, it's about to be 1945 in this. It's just, it won't end. Like, this is awful. You can't do anything on this side. And great, we got more invasions. Lovely. They're all also failing. You just continuously attack this line. It's not like anyone can do anything. You'd think at this point that peace would have ensued for because we can't do anything. It's July of 1945. We still can't end it because we can't get to the United Kingdom or anywhere else. So we're just trying to clear up Africa. Oh, Vichy France has taken back Africa. It's actually happening. All right, now it's finally time to grind away and finish off the last of the divisions here in Africa. Uh, actually, wait, no. No, we still have to deal with all this. But we're, we're doing it, baby. We're doing it. This is uh, the most fun gameplay. Sitting here and watching time go by as we slog our way through all of Africa. All right, that's that's all the central divisions, which was another million men that were down here in Africa. Okay, this is, oh my God. And with this, the forces are gonna be redistributed, which means that they're gonna be pushed out of all this because they now have no troops holding them back. Fall of Pearl Harbor. Wait, what? Are the Japanese actually invading over here? Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Japan, Japan, yes, please, please take out the United States. Oh my god, if Japan is actually able to attack the US from that side, that would be hilarious. I'll just go ahead and send you 30,000 guns. New Zealand gone. Whoa, wait, what? What? What are they? Oh my god, Japan is actually- <gasps> Yes, take out Australia, take out all the forces, Japan, thank you! That's gonna free up so much in Africa. Oh, I- I'll be honest, guys, I did not expect the AI to be able to do that. I- I- I, I didn't expect them to be able to do that. I'm genuinely very surprised. Okay, that's- that's all of West Africa, finally gone. I, oh my god, it took like three years of fighting in here. Not three, like two full years of fighting in Africa to clear this out. Okay, all right, that's, wow. The United Kingdom still has so many goddamn divisions. How do you have that many men? How? Request garrison support from Vichy for, Germany? Germany, why? I don't exactly have much manpower. You're an all adult surf. You have seven million men deployed and you still have three million manpower available. You are fine. Why are you requesting my help? No. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did they actually launch an invasion? Did they actually- No my god. No, you idiots. <laughs> oh, they, the Italians tried to invade the United Kingdom and it failed horribly because they just have so many units there now. Guys, it's January 1947. I think, I think that was it. They're trying to launch as many of these down here as they can. They're not going to work. It's just going to be a constant back and forth naval invasion until the game is over. It's done. This, my friends, is the Swiss fascist path. It just, it makes you nothing more than a little bit of a support for Germany. And don't get me wrong, that bonus, like that you think providing the, uh, the minus 7.5 consumer goods and 50% construction speed, that is huge for Germany and Italy. That is massive. But it, it just, it's, it's not enough when it comes to the AI. In multiplayer, that's stupidly strong it is not necessarily as much here. Because in the end, because in the end, 
Germany will not prioritize the UK, they will not get air superiority of the English Channel, and end things. And as a result, that gives us this. Everyone, thank you for watching. That is it for today. I have been at this now for the past, like, six hours. I'm done. Uh, I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Please let me know in the comment section what it is that we should do next. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye, guys. Okay, I left like three hours ago. I completely did not realize that I left this thing still going. I come back, and lo and behold, it's now 1956. I, I don't even know what the hell happened, man. It's like Japan ended up eating and beating all of this, so that's great. Lovely for them. The war is still ongoing. We're at 30 million losses for the Allies in 1956. Who even is responsible for all these deaths? The United States, of course. 10 million losses. Eventually, it looks like the United Kingdom actually got beaten, and now they just can't do anything over here. They're in Venezuela. They have no way to get soldiers across to actually attack the United States. The United States is just completely safe, and they're only on service by requirement. That's it. This truly would be a never-ending game. It's just... It's, I, it's done. If you stuck around for that little tidbit, congratulations to you. Other than that, have a good rest of your day, guys. Bye.